I'm back here. I'm speaking for us. We didn't lose. And we're not lost. We're not lost anymore. When the Shubenacadie Residential School in Nova Scotia shut down in 1967, Debbie Paul was the last Mi'kmaq student to leave. This picture was taken and was supposed to be given to my mother to say that she's all right. Debbie is 12 years old in this photo. Her life was about to take an incredible turn. They took me. They took me without permission. Five decades ago, Debbie's fate was decided by a nun at the residential institution. Man, that woman was mean. Strict, very strict. Sister Gilberta, her real name was Eleanor Keller, a nun since the 1940s, listed as disciplinarian of girls. We were singing, you know, one little, two little, three little Indians. Actually, she called us savages, and she should have written one little, two little, three little savages. Sister Gilberta also directed the choir, and Debbie had musical talent. Debbie Paul won high praise for her vocal solo. Noted in the records of the Sisters of Charity. Instead of me going back to the reserve, she thought that I should live with her brother and his wife out in Rockland, Mass, to continue my music. When the Shubenacadie Institution closed, Sister Gilberta snuck the 12-year-old out of the country without telling her family. Debbie was then abandoned with the nun's brother and his wife, John and Mary Wentworth, in Rockland, Massachusetts. What would you call, like, what she did in terms of taking you and putting you on a plane and bringing you to Rockland, how, what do you call it? Theft. Theft. Debbie went from the trauma of residential school to what's known as the 60 Scoop, a practice of removing Indigenous kids from their families and cultures and putting them in foster care or up for adoption. Two years ago, she filed a claim for compensation from Canada. I think I deserve it, to live the end of my life, because I went through hell. Her claim was officially rejected. Debbie appealed. Please send us more information on the length of time and location of your placement. I did that, and I have no proof, none, no records. They have no records. Going to Ronklin, Massachusetts, checking the town records, doing all that, that's my paperwork. Debbie needs proof, and she can't find it in Canada. And she wonders why the onus is on her and not the church or government or 60 Scoop lawyers. So she's chasing a paper trail and memories of a place where she was vulnerable and alone. But she's ready. I feel good. I feel good. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm not a kid anymore. You made it. Hi there. Made it anyway. Welcome to Rockland. To Rockland. Here we there go. There it is. Rockland, Massachusetts. 30 minutes outside of Boston. Does it feel strange to be back? It does. It does. First stop, the town library. We've requested a property search for 1968 to find the Wentworths. Go to Myrtle Street. Here they are at 104. John D. Wentworth, 104. There, in black and white, John and Mary Wentworth. An important confirmation of what Debbie has said all along. You have reached your destination on the left. John and Mary Wentworth both died years ago. But Debbie's painful memories are fresh. He said not to say anything, but that's part of my chores. Ironing, cleaning, and letting this man fill me up, I guess you can call it. I was 12 years old, those were my chores. What does it do five decades later for you to stand here and look at the house? It helps to heal, to face it. Not to be scared of it, to face it, to look at it and look at it in the face and says, yeah, I faced it today. 
the pieces are falling in place, but Debbie still needs documentation to show she was here as a young teen. We head to the Rockland Public School. In 1968, Debbie felt like an outsider, rejected. Today, a much different experience with an administrator keen to help. Oh, good, good, thank you. Who dug through old files in the school vault. Oh my God, I got my school records. Let's see. Finally, proof she was under the guardianship of John Wentworth. For Debbie, this is validation. This proves everything. This little piece of paper. In residential school, and then secretly sent here to Rockland, Debbie felt unwelcome and unloved, except for one place she always felt she mattered, a neighbor, Mrs. Mary Rome. They gave me so much love, love I really needed. Mary had a piano, and it was the only place Debbie could play music. The other place was bad memories, but this little house is a good memory, good house. They lost touch. Debbie, unsure if Mary is even alive. This is what I do every day. CBC tracked her down. Try it? Yep. Hello, Mrs. Rome. Debbie, how wonderful. How you make me make me cry. Me too. I can't, you but you you didn't change much. Oh Debbie. Mary Rome. Now Mary Shanklin, age ninety-three and living in St. John, New Brunswick. I just want to reach out and love you and hug you and oh God. I just can't believe it. You're there. Mary recalls her kids saying Debbie wasn't allowed to come play. You had to do housework. Yeah, every day housework. And I didn't like that. I didn't either. <laughs> no, I don't think they treated you very good. No, they didn't. Wait till I show you the other thing. Mary hung on to a souvenir Debbie gave her decades ago. <laughs> Debbie's little Indian doll. <laughs> you sent that to me the first Christmas you were gone. Oh my goodness. And I sat with it and cried. Oh. I thank you so much for giving me so much love. We didn't give you enough. We could have given you so much more. It was enough for me. It was enough. Okay? That feels good to me. Debbie may never find the answers to some questions. How and why did Sister Gilberta, Eleanor Keller, take a young Mi'kmaq girl with a talent for piano and leave her in another country? but she finds closure. I'm no longer a lost child. I'm sitting there and I'm saying, you know what? My story matters. My life, I matter. That's what I'm taking home. I mattered. Now we have freelance journalist Trina Roach joining us from Beaver Bank, Nova Scotia, near Halifax. So uh, Trina, where does Debbie's story stand right now? Not long after Debbie returned home, she got a call from the 60 Scoop administrator who told her that her claim had come up for review. And Debbie said, you know, I have proof, I have paperwork, and she uh, mailed that immediately. Uh, but the paperwork isn't a guarantee. The settlement agreement is specific to harm caused by the federal government. And Debbie was taken by a nun with the Sisters of Charity. While she was in the care at the residential school of the federal government, so it's kind of this question now of who will be held accountable, and she just doesn't have an answer yet. Mm. Well, it is a remarkable story, one that we'll keep tabs on. Uh, thank you so much, Trina. Thank you.